There is a storm a brewing. Lightning, lightning, lightning! Sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. I've been watching a, a little bit too much donut lately, so got excited. My bad. For the longest time, if you asked anyone what the uh, best air cooler on the market was, they would say the Noctua NHD15. I mean, literally, you could have asked anybody out there. You could have you could have went deep into Amish country and been like, "Hey guys, uh, what's the best air cooler?" And they're gonna be like, "The, the NHD15. Everybody knows that." What are you stupid? Now get out of here and stop taking my picture. But now things are changing. Deep Cool is here, and they mean business with the release of their new Gamer Storm Assassin 3 air cooler, a direct competitor to the NHD15, with plans to eviscerate its long-standing reign as the best air cooler. Also, they intend to look better while doing it, so. <laughs> so yeah. The Assassin 3 measures 165 millimeters tall by 140 millimeters wide by 161 millimeters deep with 54 millimeters of RAM clearance, giving it a slight advantage over the NHD 15 by like 10 millimeters being like 10 millimeters skinnier. But when you're talking about coolers this big, um, every millimeter counts when it comes to clearances. Through the nickel plated copper base plate runs seven groove centered heat pipes that continue upward through two banks of cooling fins that are assembled via a solder reflow process. All of this combines to give the Assassin 3 a rated TDP of 280 watts. Wait. But unlike others out there, performance is not the only thing that matters. So do looks. The top of each fin stack gets a mirrored finish nickel cover with an obsidian black spoiler. And I know, I know what you're thinking, why do you need a spoiler? on the top of an air cooler, does it like have VTEC or something? No, there's uh, there's no VTEC yet, but it does cover up those unsightly heat pipes, which I do appreciate uh, a great deal. Also, the two 1400 RPM TF140 S fans that come with the Assassin 3 have a very unique design. The two layer fan blades along with the narrow middle fan frame is claimed to increase airflow and static pressure. Something I haven't tested, but they do look sick. But enough yammering. Let's uh, let's see if the new Challenger can dethrone the king. So this is actually the first time I've had these out side by side, and it will be as uh, not a shock to anybody that I do like how the the Assassin 3 looks when compared to the Noctua. I mean, obviously the NHD 15 isn't known for its looks, and I mean you can't get the Romax series stuff to make the fans black and cover up all your your fin stack to basically make it look like the Assassin 3, but that's like extra cost, which some people might think is worth it, others might not, but in their stock configuration, the Assassin 3 does look a lot better. Um, now though that I have them on the table, getting kind of worried about the size of trying to fit them in the case that I want to test them in, uh, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But I think we're gonna start with the Assassin 3, the Challenger here, we'll see how that one does on the test. Ah, uh, we all saw that coming, so. So testing's done, and I'm gonna say right out of the right out of the gate here that um, I'm kind of surprised at how everything turned out. Um, I was I did have a little bit of a problem getting these things to fit in my case, the S340 Elite, uh, as you did see. So I had to run basically both coolers without a front panel, which maybe is not ideal. I don't know. I was when I was talking to Deep Cool, they said to get the best possible results on the Assassin 3 to run it in a case versus like a test bench. Well, I wasn't able to fit it, so you get what you can get. Uh, I do have the NHD15 still installed, but I had to remove the front fan to get everything to fit in there. And I wanted to run the coolers in their stock configuration, so side panel had to come off. For the testing though, I ran it on my i5-2500K at 4.9 gigahertz, which yes, isn't the most current chip, but it doesn't really need to be. It just needs to make heat, because we need to see how each one of these is able to dissipate that heat. Uh, for my test, I basically ran each cooler for 30 minutes on Prime 95 and took a, took notes of the average and max package temperature. And I, get, I ran them twice. So I ran those two, the same cooler two times, took the average, next cooler two times, took the average, just kind of to give it the best possible score to kind of really show what what each one could do. Mounting them, both like the, the mounting setup, each one, pretty simple. I mean, there's nothing much to it. They both go in there pretty easily. Noise wise, I will say the NHD 15 is still quieter than the Assassin 3. So that's something that means a lot to you. Make sure to consider uh, that when you're picking out which cooler works best for you.
Price-wise though, um, the, as you see, the NHD15 is about 119 right now on Newegg. Whereas if you want the Assassin 3, you're gonna pay $139.99. So yes, this one's a little bit more expensive. It's a little louder. So things are not really looking too good for it so far. That all changes when we get into performance. So just starting out at idle temperatures, the Assassin 3 had an idle temperature of 35.8, which is actually quite good for an air cooler in a room that had a room temperature of 21.9. The NHD15, the cooler we all know, and some of us love, some of us hate, had an idle temperature of 37 degrees. So right, we're starting out showing that the Assassin 3 is beating the NHD15, at least in idle temperatures. But things get even more interesting when we look at the max and average package temperature. So the NHD15 had a max temperature of 67.5 and a ma or an average package temperature of 61.65, which are good temperatures. Nobody's gonna say that's hot. The Assassin 3 finished the same test and averaged out with a max temperature of 66 degrees and an average package temperature of 59.5 which is pretty pretty darn impressive for an air cooler. Um, I, was, I was pretty blown away. I know that a lot of other YouTubers and I seen on their, their what they published that, yes, this cooler was shown to be able to beat that one, but I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. And I've used the NHD15 quite a few times. I knew how good it was, but when I used this thing, I was pretty blown away with how well it performed. So in a nutshell, if you're currently looking for the best air cooler, for your build, if you're looking to want to do an air cooling build, you want to be able to overclock, you want the best performance possible, the Assassin 3 is what you're going to get. It's just flat out what it's going to be if you want the best performance. The best part is though, in the past, if you wanted best performance, you kind of had to suffer with the, the brown deal, which not a lot of us like. And if you wanted to make it black, you had to get the Chromex stuff, which then would push the price of the NHD15 above the Assassin 3. So it kind of didn't really, didn't really make everybody happy. You either got performance or you got, you had to spend more money and get performance and looks. Whereas now you get performance and at least I think you get good looks along with it. So I don't know, let me, let me know what you guys think. Do you think the Assassin 3 is all it's cracked up to be? Do you like how it looks? What is your thoughts? If you think the NHD 15 is still the best, let me know why in the comments, but I'm sold. The Assassin 3 is the best, so. You might be wondering though, why do I still have the NHD 15 in there if I think the Assassin 3 is the best? Well, it was already in there, so it's just easier to just leave it. And I also want to use this in a build that I'm hopefully going to be coming out with later on, later on down the line. So stick tuned, stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.